So grouping layers basically means creating a folder for your layers. And then this folder can act a little bit as a layer on its own. You can scale it, you can do certain modifications to a group, and also it just makes it easier for you to stay organized in your project. So let's say that we want these three objects to be in one group. How do we do that? We select them and then we press Command G. You see that it created something called a group here, group seven, and here's what I meant by folder. So basically you can expand and collapse the contents of a group, you can see what's inside, and then you can move this group around as if it were just another layer. You can of course rename the group however you'd like, and also scale the group, which also means scaling the layers, the objects inside the group. To ungroup a layer, to remove the group, you simply press Command Shift G. And of course G stands for group, so that's Command G for grouping and Command Shift G for ungrouping. Let's also talk briefly about frames. Frames are very similar to groups, but they are more flexible in terms of what you can actually do with them. So to switch from group to a frame, you simply go here and select frame. Let's say it starts from scratch. You have these three groups. You press Command Option G, so that creates a frame. And you can also immediately tell the difference uh, because the group doesn't have a name right here above it, whereas a frame does. And for example, what a frame offers you to do as opposed to a group is you can add a background, you can add a stroke to the frame, to the whole group. You cannot do that with ordinary layer groups. If you actually add a stroke, it will add to the individual layers. Also, you can define how objects inside a frame actually behave. If you have a basic group, you have no choice but to simply accept that it's going to scale the object. Whereas with a frame, you can go to individual objects and then say how they're going to act inside the frame. So let's say we want this one to stick to the left side and the top side, and this one to the left side and the bottom side, whereas this one will scale. Let's see what happens. So this layer is kind of stuck here. This layer is kind of glued to the bottom of the frame, whereas this layer is you know, scaling as if it were a regular layer. So that's really good about frames. They are really flexible and there is a lot of options for customization. So I suggest you use ordinary layer groups for simpler layouts, for like icons, or not even icons, I would say just like any case where you don't require basically any flexibility. And frames are great for, you know, designing semi-responsive interfaces. If you, for example, define that top menu always sticks to the top edge, so I could define that, you know, that this rectangle is always scales in terms of width, but stays glued to the top in terms of vertical adjustments. Let's see what that looks like. So you can immediately see that this is very practical when, for example, building layouts with uh, sticky navigation bars. It's very useful. It's also good to say that I mostly use frames because they are simply more sophisticated. And in general, I think they are more useful. And that's how you use groups in Figma. If you found this video useful, please leave a like. And if you want to learn more about Figma, if you're learning this powerful program, definitely check out my channel where I do plenty of tutorials on Figma. Thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next one.